Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video showing you how I go through the process of zeroing a scope on a rifle. Now this is a video that was specifically requested by one of my patrons. Um, they asked me how I zero different optics on a rifle. I, I tried doing this video before where I was showing how to do a magnified optic like this, a 1-6, to six, and doing a red dot. And it just became, became this big like gelatinous mess of a video. So I decided I'm gonna to try to break it down into individual videos where I go over how to zero, uh, starting with a regular scoped rifle, and then depending on if people want it, I'll also show specific videos on say like a red dot, even a red dot with a magnifier, if there's demand for it. Um, so today I'm gonna to be zeroing this primary arms four to 14 first focal plane uh, scope with the 5.56 uh, DMR HUD reticle. Um, really, really like this scope. I've used it a ton already. Mostly on this rifle, um, this was on a previous uh, or a different rifle for some accuracy testing on that thing, which you guys will hopefully be seeing in the near future. Um, but I've returned this optic back to this rifle, so I got to zero it anyway. Might as well make a video about it. Um, now, most of the stuff that I cover is going to apply to just all different types of magnified optics like this. Um, but obviously, some of the specifics will be about this scope um, specifically, I guess. Um, one of those specifics is going to be the distance in which I zero it. Now, um, I'm sure the question will come up, hey, I have this scope, where should I zero it at? What distance should I zero it at? And honestly, it, there are so many variables, barrel length, bullet velocity, um, how far you plan on shooting, all those things. It's so dependent, I'm not going to really go too in-depth with it. I'm not going to give anyone any advice on that. There's a lot of resources out there already. Um, however, for a scope like this, one that has a bullet drop compensating reticle, typically they're going to tell you an exact distance to zero this, so I'm going to be zeroing this at 100 yards. Now, in order to do that, I'm not going to start at 100 yards, and I guess this is where my first tip kind of comes, in a, uh, comes into play. Um, be humble when it comes to zeroing a rifle. Start really, really close, especially if you haven't put this optic on this rifle before in the past, because you have no idea where that zero is going to be. Um, so do yourself a favor, start close, figure out where you're printing, so you're not just wasting ammo, not even hitting paper at say 50 or 100 yards. The second thing I'm going to recommend is when you at least get your final zero, use the type of ammo that you want to actually have your rifle zeroed for. So I'm gonna be really zeroing this for Fioki 62 grain full metal jacket ammo. Um, I don't have a whole lot of it left with me out here today. Um, however, this should be more than enough to get a good solid zero at 100 yards. Um, if you're on a budget and say you wanna have it zeroed for some sort of match grade ammo like I'll be shooting later, um, by all means start with a cheaper ammo to at least get pretty dang close to zero, but then to do your final adjustments, make sure you're using that zero, uh, using the ammo you want to zero it for. Now, the third thing I'm going to recommend is know exactly how far your zeroing target is. If you if you want to zero your rifle for 100 yards, you better make sure the target you're shooting at is 100 yards away. So I actually have a loophole rangefinder that I'm going to be using when I go out to 100 yards to make sure that my zero is exactly where I want it to be. Because if you have your bullet drop compensator and you think you're shooting 100 yards, but you're really only shooting 80 or 75. Because once you start getting into those longer ranges, 300, 400, all the way up to 600, 700 yards, um, that difference in what your zero is, is really gonna start showing up and you're definitely gonna start missing your targets. And now the, the last thing I'm gonna recommend is try to shoot your rifle like you want it to actually shoot in the field. So if you have a bipod on the in the field, zero it with a bipod. If you're not gonna have a bipod on it, don't zero it with a bipod. Little things like that can make a big difference in the barrel harmonics and different things like that, especially if you don't have a free, th free, free floated barrel. This one is free floated, um, but you know, again, try to shoot it like you're going to shoot it in the field. Now, that might be hard for like hunters out there, so try to using sandbags or something like that. But if you're not going to be shooting it in the field with a bipod, don't zero it with a bipod. Is basically what I'm getting at there. And before I get into the actual zeroing process, uh, just a quick overview of this rifle in case this is the first video you've seen with this thing. Um, it's pretty much all air precision parts. It's got an air precision 18-inch uh, 223 wild stainless steel barrel. I got a VG6 Gamma at the front of this thing. Um, I have a air precision handguard, air precision receivers, bolt carrier group, and be charging handle, uh, B5 uh, pistol grip and trigger guard here. Inside the trigger right now I have a uh, Rise Armament RA434. Big fan of these things and um, will hopefully help 
adding to a little bit of precision. And then I just have a Magpul uh, MOE rifle stock, fixed rifle stock back here. And then the mount for this optic is an Aero Precision um, optic mount, which super lightweight, big fan of it so far. Um, and then a, a Harris bipod in front. So let me go ahead and load up some mags and then we'll get started with the process. The first target I'm gonna be shooting at is only 25 yards away. Again, I'm just shooting the 62 grain for middle jacket from Fioki. Um, make sure if you have a parallax adjustment that you're adjusting your parallax accordingly to the distance of your target. Um, I know some people are gonna shoot three round groups regardless of how close they're shooting. I'm just gonna shoot one round, see where it's at, and I'm gonna go ahead at least at this close, just starting out, just do one shot groups until I get it kind of where I want it. And then I'm gonna start shooting bigger and bigger group, or I guess uh, more round groups to make sure I know exactly what kind of that average spot is. But to start out, I'm just gonna be doing one shot groups and then making adjustments from there. So just to save myself some time, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just make the adjustments back here. Once I get it where I want it, then we'll go down range together. We'll uh, look at where those shots all landed and I'll explain what I did in between each shot. But looking through the scope, Again, this is one nice thing, being nice and close to this target. Um, I can see exactly where that shot was. If you're doing a red dot, that might not always be possible. So having like a spotting scope or even just like a laser rangefinder like that loophole I have um, is going to come in really handy to spot those shots so you don't have to walk down range every time. Um, but I can tell just by looking at it that I'm an inch and a half to the left and for the distance I'm shooting at, probably... Uh, probably about three inches high. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some adjustments here and then uh, we'll pick back up once once we get close and again we'll walk down range and I'll show you what changes I actually made. So hopefully you can see this but my first shot was up here. Now my point of aim was dead center on this circle right here. Um, now obviously I'm about an inch and a half left which is nice when a target like this that has the grid lines makes it really easy to figure out what kind of adjustments you need to make. So I adjusted it to the right and I adjusted it down um, second shot was right here. Now, I'll tell you, even though my point of aim was right here, my intended point of impact is about two inches low, dead center left to right. So I adjusted it down even more and a little bit more to the right. Shot right there, adjusted it a little bit more and got it a little bit further to the right than I wanted. Um, but this is gonna be close enough for us to move out to 50 yards now. Let's go ahead, go back to the benches and I'll explain why I wanted my impact to be two inches low here at 25 yards. Now, before I really get in depth into my you know, reasoning for wanting that impact to be low, what I'm gonna go ahead and do before I forget is just double check all the fasteners on this mount, just because typically when you tighten them at home, depending on how much torque you apply and all that stuff, um, sometimes they might start coming loose under recoil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and while pressing the mount base forward, just double check to make sure that each of these screws is still snug, because if they're not snug, obviously we're gonna start having some uh, point of impact shifts and then all this time is gonna be wasted. So, to explain why I want that impact to be low at uh, 25 yards, and now even 50 yards. When you're looking at how the optics are set up on rifles, I mean, probably 99% of the time, your optic is directly above your barrel. Sometimes it might be canted off slightly left or right, depending on what type of rifle this is, at least on like ARs, things like that. Your, your optic is directly above your barrel. Now on an AR, typically the optic is actually gonna be about two and a half inches above the center line of your barrel. So that means that as soon as that barrel leaves, as soon as that bullet leaves the barrel, if you had your muzzle right up against your target, if you're aiming through the scope, your bullet is gonna impact about two and a half inches low at the end of your barrel. Now, obviously as that bullet travels, you want it to kind of come up and at some point meet that point of aim through your optic. Now that is what your actual zero is going to be. So if I want this to be zeroed at 100 yards, I'm actually going to want it to be low at 25, slightly less low at 50, so that at 100 yards that bullet rises to meet my actual point of aim. Um, so now at 50 yards, I'm still going to want that bullet to be about an inch and a half below my point of aim. Um, so you guys saw that bullet was just at two inches low. I'm going to go ahead and shoot at 50 yards and see if... Uh, you know, what kind of difference there is in point of impact, doubling the distance. And of course, obviously I'm gonna adjust my parallax to make sure that we're set for the distance we're shooting. And I'm gonna load up a couple more rounds.
Again, my point of aim was dead center here on the circle. And as you can see, we're still actually about two inches low. We're a little bit higher than we were at 25 yards, but we're still a little bit low. Now, this is about probably center to center, less than a half inch group. Um, with this ammo, I can usually expect about an inch at 100 yards. So that's about what we want. I did make one click of adjustment because I believe, let's see, my first round was one of these two, clicked it over one to the left and then um, shot another one, which was this one. And then my third shot kind of kept it back in this little spot right here. Now, because both the target and the target stand are canted slightly this way, um, I wouldn't actually want it to be lined up perfectly with this center line anyway, just because what's directly below that line is a little bit off to the right of that center line. Um, so this is pretty much gonna be good enough for 50 yards. So with that, let's go ahead and shoot out at 100 yards. So we're still about two inches low at 100 yards, or at 50 yards. So let's go ahead and see what happens at 100 yards, um, what that point of impact difference is gonna be between those two distances. Again, I'm gonna double check my parallax to make sure it's 100 yards. And let me grab my range finder just so again, I know for a fact how far that target is away from me. All right, so just FYI, the range finder I'm using, again, is from Loophole. It's the RX1200i with TBRW. Um, I've been using this thing for quite a while now. I, I'm, I feel like I'm ready to do a review on it. The only thing I'm waiting on is I want to be able to use this at longer ranges than I'm typically using here at this range. Um, so hopefully once my buddy lets me come up and use their 600 yard range, I'm going to be doing my review on this thing. But pretty much you can assume that if I'm ever telling you the known distance to a target, at least within the last uh, probably seven or eight months since I got this thing, if I'm telling you what the distance is to the target, I use this to figure out what that distance is. And so I actually know now that that target is at 97 yards, uh, not 100 yards. Now, because of that, I'm gonna want that bullet impact to be just ever so slightly low at 100. However, that dis difference of a three yards, of three yards probably won't make that much of a difference. However, again, once you start getting six, seven, 800 yards out there, which the scope will let you do, that's gonna start showing up big time. So let's go ahead, take a couple shots at 100 yards and see what difference there is. All right, so there are eight my own words. Um, while well, I checked the mounts down here, I did not double check the mounts up here because what I noticed was at 100 yards, I had about a two inch group. And I know for this ammo, through this barrel, that's not supposed to be a thing. Um, so I figured, okay, something's gotta be loose. Sure enough, a couple of these screws had come loose up here. So I just went ahead, snugged them down. Um, it looks like we're still about two inches low, which is, Honestly, surprising. Um, that's not how that normally works. I'm gonna go ahead and raise my point of uh, impact up a little bit by adjusting my turrets up here. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll see, um, we'll see if, if tightening it down is gonna help any. Now, one thing I, I'm gonna go ahead and mention now is not necessarily something everyone's gonna be able to do. If you have a really stable shooting platform, especially if you're using like a, like a ransom rest or like a, a Caldwell lead sled, um, one thing you can do is just keep a rifle stationary, keep it at your point of aim, and then adjust the scope until it, uh, until the point of, uh, basically the center aiming dot on your reticle is over where that last point of impact was. So I'm going to try to keep this nice and steady and do that now. If you're shooting off bags or something where the rifle keeps moving around, that's not going to work. So don't even try. Just try to make it based off that, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and try that method of adjustment right now to at least get it close. Interesting. So this is why you want to do those tightenings. Um, before you start shooting at longer ranges because now I can tell that my entire point of impact has now shifted to the right a few inches. So 
again, this is a, would have been a nice thing for me to figure out early on, and that's why I told you to do it. I did the, it the wrong way. I'm going to say on purpose to show you why it matters, but uh, thankfully we're still on paper, so I can at least make adjustments based off that 100-yard target. And as you can tell now, I'm also shooting like three shot groups because that's what's going to really tell me where that kind of center average is. All right. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that target. Those are pretty dang close. Actually, before we do that, what I want to go ahead and do, just to save myself some time, is show you why it's important to zero your rifle the type of ammo you're going to be shooting. So to demonstrate that, I was shooting 62 grains before. I'm going to shoot some 50 grain VMAX ammo, um, wait, no, sorry, sorry, varmint grenades, uh, also loaded up by Fioki. I'm going to shoot some 75 grain boat tail hollow points um, from Hornady, just to show you once you start going up in weight, up in, uh, in, up in weight, down in velocity is typically how it works, and then lower in weight, up in velocity, how that affects your point of impact. So um, I'm going to be using different um, aiming spots on the piece of paper, but you'll be able to tell based on my point of aim versus the point of impact what type of shift we're looking at. All right. I know people are going to be begging for five shot groups. This is not necessarily an accuracy test video. This is solely to be demonstrating uh, zeroing. So I'm only shooting three shot groups right now. As I pull five shots out. I'm so used to doing five shot groups. Alright. <laughs> Let's uh, try it with some 75 grains. Interesting. Alright. Well, let's see how that did. The first group I shot were these three rounds right here. Now, I knew that that was an atypically large group for that type of ammo through that barrel. That's when I noticed that the rings were loose on the scope. So I tightened those down and then I got this group right here. Tightened it up about half the size, but it was still pretty far off here to the right. So I adjusted it over and then I shot these three rounds right here into uh, right around an inch, probably just under an inch, um, which is more what I, again, what I'm gonna expect from that ammo through that barrel at this distance. Um, so from there, I've basically made two clicks to the left adjustment and that's, that's gonna be it for me. Um, and I'll show you guys what that's capable of here momentarily. That's when I also switched over to a couple different types of ammo to show you why it's important to zero with the type of ammo you're shooting. So down here was that 50 grain uh, varmint grenade. As you can see, my point of aim being right here dead center was uh, about an inch and a quarter low and about an uh, inch and a half to the right. So again, is that a huge difference? Is that going to mean the difference between a hit or a miss at 100 yards? Probably not, but again, pushing out to those further ranges, you're gonna see a big difference in uh, your point of aim, point of impact. Over here was those 75 grain boat tail hollow points, um, which just this barrel just seems to be a little too heavy for what this barrel likes. It's a one and eight twist. Um, so it opened up quite a big group here. Again, what I felt were all good trigger presses with a consistent point of aim. Uh, again, dead center here. You can see that it kind of shifted all over the place. So. Um, Again, that's why I recommend that you zero it with the ammo you're going to be shooting so you know exactly where that round's going to go at whatever distance you're shooting. So in a nutshell, that's my quick and dirty process for zeroing a scope. If you have zero stop turrets, obviously you can make your adjustments there um, depending on you know, how your scope specifically is set up. Again, you can read the owner's manual, figure out exactly what you're supposed to do depending on your specific uh, model. However, Again, this is kind of a general overview of my process for different magnified optics like this primary arms 4 to 14 first focal plane HMR uh, DMR HUD scope 556. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you what this thing is going to be capable of once you do have it zeroed 
Granted, I'm only going to be shooting 300 yards at a 300 yard gong, um, but you can see the kind of boring consistency you can get at slightly extended ranges um, with that. But then, like I said, I'm going to be hopefully shooting a longer ranges here soon um, where I can review that um, rangefinder and then also review this scope specifically and see how easy it is to hit targets out to 600 yards even. So, so I'm going to go ahead and ro uh, roll in that footage of me shooting down there and then we'll come back, wrap up a couple of my thoughts on this process and a couple other tips and tricks that I have for shooting preferably smaller groups. So I have 15 rounds left of the 62 grain Fioki ammo. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just load it all up and then take some shots at a seal target at 290 yards, um, which you should be seeing it now since I have my downrange camera set up. It has to be kind of quick because there's not a whole lot of battery left on that other camera. So um, if anything, that'll just make for more of a challenge. But again, this is just to kind of, kind of demonstrate that once you have your zero, it makes it really, really easy, at least with this reticle, to hit targets pretty far down there. So let's go ahead, get set up, adjust my parallax. And uh, let's make sure I can get this thing going where I want it. All right, 15 for 15, just that easy. Um, could have gone a little bit faster, but I had to wait for that plate to stop swinging a couple times. And again, using the reticle on this thing just makes it a breeze. Just put the top of that stadia line and uh, you're rocking and rolling at 300 yards. So one thing I typically find is going to help me shoot slightly better groups, which is going to make zeroing it a little bit easier, especially when you're shooting at distance, is trying to make sure, especially once your barrel gets hot, because as you'll notice, I didn't take breaks really to let the barrel cool down in between shots. A couple times I walked down, that was really a couple minutes at most and not really enough time for the barrel to cool. So what I've noticed is as the barrel starts to get hotter, what I try to do is keep each bullet or each cartridge in the chamber for the same amount of time before I pull that trigger because ambient temperature temperature right now is obviously a lot colder than the chamber temperature. So each of these rounds is gonna heat up slightly before it actually gets discharged. And the heat of that powder inside is gonna change the burn rate, which is gonna change velocity, pressures, all that stuff. So what I try to do is like, as soon as I chamber that first round, I kind of start an internal clock and say it takes me 10 seconds to get that first trigger pull. I'll try to wait 10 seconds in between each shot, which is gonna allow each of those rounds to hopefully heat up to pretty close to the same temperature. Now, does that make a huge difference? Um, possibly, I have noticed the difference myself, um, although your gun could be completely different. Um, so just take that with a grain of salt. It's just something that I personally do. And, and another thing to note is really none of anything I said in this entire video matters if you don't have good fundamentals for shooting because um, if you don't have good fundamentals, your shots are going to be so all over the place that you have no idea what your actual zero is. You might have like a five inch circle where somewhere in there might be your zero or your zero could be up and to the right, but you keep jerking the trigger so much that it's sending all your rounds low and to the left. Um, I can almost guarantee that if you're shooting low left, it's you and it's not your gun and it's not your optic. Um, but you know, we'll leave it at that. It's, it's kind of a topic for another video, I guess. Um, so definitely get out, you know, try to zero your rifle. Once you have a good solid zero, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, especially once you start getting like ballistic calculators and all that. You know, if you if you know what you're, if you're what, especially what velocity you're shooting at, what type of bullet you're shooting at, ballistic coefficient, coefficients and all that, you can pretty well extrapolate what that bullet's gonna do out to some pretty long ranges. In fact, that's how I did the uh, uh, 290 yard shots with the subsonic 308 having never shot subsonic 308 before, hitting 
three out of four, the last three being in a row, um, at 290 yards. Um, my ballistic calculator, calculator let me do that with my primary arm scope on that rifle um, because I knew velocities and all that stuff. So um, your, your equipment is capable of a lot and you don't have to spend a lot of money to get good consistent groups at longer ranges. But again, I guess that's kind of a topic for another video. So um, I hope that you were able to learn a little bit from this video. Again, I know it's kind of rough and dirty, um, you know, stuff like how much you actually adjust for what distances is gonna depend on your scope, what your knobs say, like this one's in mills, some of them are gonna be MOA, and the ones that are MOA might be a quarter MOA, half MOA, again, depending on what type of optic you're shooting. Um, but uh, this one's been working well for me, so, um, and I needed to zero it today, so that's hence why we made this video. Um, so again, um, this was a specific request from one of my patrons. So if you are interested in, you know, specifically requesting videos, um, becoming a patron is a really good way to do that. At least it'll in increase the likelihood that I'm going to listen to you um, over just, you know, your average run-of-the-mill person that leaves whatever comments end up, you know, floating through their mind at the time. Um, I don't know. Some of y'all say some really weird stuff, but. Uh, yeah, so if you are interested, you can follow the links below to my Patreon page. The people who do that um, obviously get to see videos early, as well as doing some exclusive content for them, um, as well as uh, we'll be doing our first live stream tonight, actually. So uh, we can look forward to something like that if you're a patron. And uh, really, with that, as always, I hope you got something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching.